Thursday, June 15th, 2023, Perryton, Texas. Along the border of the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles is the small city of Perryton, Texas. Being a two-hour drive away from Amarillo, it is a hub for the many farmers whose fields encompass the community. But over this farming town brews an atmosphere conducive for all severe weather threats. The Storm Prediction Center has outlined a large moderate risk area for a large swath of western Oklahoma as strong cape, potent upper level kinematics, and deep low level moisture are forecast to align over the region. Shortly after 5 p.m. local time, a southeastwardly moving supercell plants a tornado roughly a mile northwest of town. The storm is on a collision course with Perryton, and a neighborhood of mobile homes at the northwest corner of town would be the first to sustain a direct hit. The EF3 tornado would mow over this neighborhood with relative ease before traversing into the downtown area. In only 10 hellish minutes, over 200 homes and businesses would be destroyed in Perryton. Among the carnage were over 100 injuries and three fatalities. But most tragically, the loss of an 11-year-old who was sheltered in his family's mobile home at the time of the tornado. The Perryton event is unfortunately not an isolated incident. An alarming number of tornado fatalities have occurred due to residents taking shelter in their mobile homes. Since 1996, over 53% of at-home tornado fatalities are associated with mobile homes, which is alarming because only 6% of all housing in America are mobile homes. In fact, as of August 2023, 45 out of the 74 tornado fatalities that have occurred this year in the United States were associated with mobile homes. Let us take a deep dive into the mobile home tornado sheltering problem. Let's start with the fundamentals. What exactly is a mobile home? Mobile homes, also known as trailer or manufactured homes, are prefabricated residencies that are built onto a trailer and transported to their eventual property. Traditional wood frame homes, on the other hand, usually start at the property. The contractor will build up the eventual house on site, pouring a foundation, erecting a wooden frame, running plumbing, electricity, etc. With these manufactured homes, they are completely built up in a factory and hooked up to utilities once delivered. The main advantage to owning a manufactured home is the cost. From the initial upfront payment to maintenance over the years, they are much cheaper than their traditional wood framed, still structured counterparts. But when we look at this from a severe weather perspective, the construction has its inherent flaws. While the walls, windows, and roofing seem like any traditional wood framed house, the critical difference is down below. The structure of a mobile home is not built or secured to a permanent foundation. Most of these homes are on what are called pier and beam foundations, which provide little to no resistance against tensile loads. Oftentimes, when a manufactured home is subjected to tornadic winds, the lighter construction and large gap between the subfloor and the ground lead to the home being tipped or thrown from its minimal foundation. The occupants and objects within are thrown as if it were a dryer tumbler. It doesn't take long after that for the structure to suffer a catastrophic failure, as the framing is subjected to unaccounted for loads. Keep in mind too, all of this is happening within a matter of a few seconds. While we typically associate stronger, more violent tornadoes with fatalities, the statistics behind mobile home tornado fatalities paint a bleak picture. 79% of fatalities that were in tornadoes rated EF2 or less took place within a manufactured home. What is even more alarming is that while yearly tornado fatalities as a whole have trended downward since the 1930s, mobile homes are a more modern problem with their popularity only taking place within the past 50 years. 43.6% of at-home tornado fatalities from 1975 to 1984 occurred within a mobile home. 
That same stat has increased to 63.2% when looking at the past 10 years. Notable recent tornadoes have only exacerbated the statistic. Out of the 23 fatalities in the 2019 Lee County, Alabama EF4, 19 were in mobile homes. Of the 14 fatalities in the 2023 Rolling Fork, Mississippi EF4, 9 were in mobile homes. Okay, so now that we've gone over how this happens in the underlying numbers, why is this happening and what can be done about it? Manufactured homes have been under scrutiny for years for their lack of protection in severe weather. The landmark case that exposed this widespread problem was not a tornado, but rather a hurricane. In late August of 1992, Hurricane Andrew made landfall as a historic Category 5 along Florida's southeastern coast before crossing into the Gulf of Mexico and making another landfall in Louisiana. Across both Florida and Louisiana, thousands of mobile homes were wiped away by the powerful winds of the storm. Over 250,000 people were displaced and 65 were killed. The aftermath of Andrew drove legislation in the state of Florida to set strict building codes for residents so a repeat of Andrew wouldn't occur. The federal government also passed legislation to tighten building regulations for coastal communities. Outside of Florida and coastal regions, however, the same standards aren't implemented universally. Tornado-prone regions of the United States, like Texas, Oklahoma, Alabama, and Mississippi, are what are known as Zone 1 states. Zone 1 manufactured homes have the lowest standards in the country when it comes to their construction. With no legislation to better regulate anchoring methods for manufactured homes, builders provide the cheapest to build options in the impoverished regions of the nation, which often overlap with tornado hotspots. It's not all doom and gloom, however. For example, in the wake of recent Alabama tornadoes, state legislators are implementing laws that provide more shelters for those that need them by giving liability protection to churches and businesses that open as emergency shelters, even if specific tornado shelters aren't available. While these buildings aren't 100% perfect, they are far superior to any unanchored mobile home. On January 12, 2023, a long track tornado was in progress to the west of Elmore County, Alabama. EAS alerts notified residents 30 minutes ahead of the tornado of 16 shelter locations across the county. While there were fatalities to the west, people heaved the warnings in Elmore County, and by the tornado's end, no fatalities took place in Elmore County. So what should you do if you live in a mobile home? First and foremost is to establish a plan ahead of time. Identify the closest shelters in your area, whether it be a family member's well-built house with a tornado shelter or a public shelter that's in a couple mile radius. Keep an emergency go bag readily available so that if there is a tornado warning issued, it is right there accessible and out the door with you when that warning is issued. Have a weather radio inside your home. That way you always have multiple means of receiving weather information, particularly tornado warnings. Of course, stay weather aware, following your daily forecasts and just being overall aware of when severe weather just might be in the forecast for your area that day. Set alerts for tornado watches, that way if there is a tornado watch issued, you have a heightened sense of awareness for tornado warnings and you'll be prepared to act on your plan the moment a tornado warning is issued. All of these things are so crucial for when a tornado warning is issued in your community, especially if you live in a mobile home. All of these things are crucial for when a tornado warning is issued. That way there is zero hesitation because every second counts when it comes to these tornado warnings, especially when you're in a mobile home that is not adequate for sheltering you in any sort of tornado, never mind a violent one. Several minutes of preparation ahead of time can be a matter of life and death when that tornado warning is issued and you can split second act on that warning. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always, stay safe out there when it comes to severe weather.